Texas, mate. You're an absolute menace. Oh, really? Like a beast of honey. This is what you call a police state. Uh, the, the cops claim they're finishing. Gladys has resigned. We're celebrating. Democracy manifest. Maybe they're delivering the evidence. Very embarrassing. Hey, what happened to the drug test? Somebody didn't answer the question. Stand up. We should measure. Come here, please. Today, Don't vote for Liberal, Labor or Green. What's the question, Justin? As you can see behind me, we have another customer. You're wasting police resources. Legal and ethical. Ah, ah, ah. There's evidence. Could you walk, Jay? Why would a police hide, you know? Look, at him. Look, look, at him. look how he's hiding. He thinks he's where's Wally. Look at him. You just ripped it out on camera. Skiing, skiing mostly. <laughs> let's talk, buddy. Yeah, let's get one. Are you the same one as yesterday? <laughs> so, guys, we got AFP on the scene. I am going. Why can't we, Boris? To a direction. Can't listen to this stuff without having a beer. An area which is lawful to attend an essential reason for your foraging. He's foraging for the fruit of the land. That doesn't make any sense. Why don't you check this one? You always look stressed when you see me, man. And these poor kids just came out of Academy in Goulburn. We are not marching to Parliament. We are marching on Parliament. Don't be shy. Channel 7 or Channel 9? Well, here you go. How about that? Enjoying the diesel engine of the Land Cruiser. You know what? The Electoral Commission would just love that. Can you not interrupt the search, mate? Every time the cops try and do this, they lose. Hey, what has he found? <laughs> I'm under arrest. I already told you. That was followed by high patrol the whole way then back. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing the Aussie card, the freedom of speech card. Welcome to fascist country Australia. He's another one joining the party. We're all being oppressed, we're all being intimidated. Oh I've just, I've just got to give you one of these. Well, you're serving this, you may as well read it. Do I get a schmack for today for being a good citizen? Watch them run away in shame. Which Thanks. channel are you from? Enjoy your day, mate. Boom! Thank you very much. And welcome back to the Aussie Cossack Show for the 14th of April. Uh, broadcasting from the Russian consulate very soon. Approaching 500 days uh, locked up in here. It's been a massive weekend, very eventful weekend. Uh, we've just started uh, the show tonight because I was uh, stuck in an interview with the Guardian newspaper. Uh, they're all over this story, uh, what's happened at Bondi Westfields yesterday. Let's just say off the bat, no jokes, very serious, very tragic, and condolences to the victims and families. Uh, that's the first thing uh, on the agenda and it's made that very clear. And I remind everyone to uh, keep uh, keep saying about these things. Uh, there's a lot of speculation online, massive amount of speculation. And that, of course, uh, was fueled by the police not revealing the identity of the attacker in the Bondi Westfields uh, attack until the next day, the following day, allowing speculation to fuel, to run rampant as to who this attacker is. Uh, and that's only natural. That's only normal. The question is, if you're going to name an attacker, make sure you know who it is if you're confirming in the information. If you're not confirming the information, if you're giving uh, some commentary or you're talking about what the speculation is, use the word unconfirmed like I did. And unconfirmed, according to the Oxford Dictionary, means not confirmed as to truth or validity. Now, of course, this story has gone global and in Australia. It's been the main topic of conversation. Uh, there's plenty of uh, action all over X, Twitter. Uh, let's have a look at the comment section. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to what happened, who who was first, who said first, what was first, the chicken or the egg. Where did Channel 7 get that uh, outrageous allegation from? Who was named? Why were they named? Why, why shouldn't they have been named? And what happened in the end? But in the end, we know that the uh, police this morning Named the attacker who uh, killed six people. Or was it five people plus him? You should be. Uh, very uh, six fatalities, yeah, in total. Uh, but the mainstream media, all over the shop, all over the shop. Uh, it's a tragedy, of course. We can see in the comment section people want to want to talk about Iran, and uh, that's what we're going to talk about tonight: the Iran Israel situation. And we'll be joined quite shortly uh, by uh, an esteemed uh, guest. Arnold uh, Develle. Uh, this man is a uh, public commentator. He's a political commentator. He's a jurist. Uh, he is uh, also a person who, at one stage in his career, uh, in the capacity of a lawyer, actually represented 
Saddam Hussein. So he's very well versed in that region of the world, in the Middle East. And he's the uh, right person to have tonight to talk about, to unpack the Iran-Israel situation. I've got my own views, and I'm not a specialist. I'm not an expert in that area. Uh, I know many of your comments section are, uh, and you're very interested in what's happening between Israel, Iran, and other countries that have been caught up in this, including Syria, Jordan. Uh, Jordan, outrageous, opened its airspace to the Israelis. Uh, let me know, as usual, in the comment section where you're watching from tonight, where you're tuning in from. Make sure you hit the like button right now. Hit the share button uh, across all our platforms uh, on YouTube, on Rumble. Uh, welcome to everyone who's watching via X, the preferred platform, of course. Tune in via X, Aussie Kozak X. And uh, if you're on Facebook, get off Facebook and don't use it because it's a bad place. It's a bad platform. Uh, but let's have a look. We've got people from uh, all over the country watching and all, all over from overseas as usual very international audience uh one thing with this tragedy in bondi was uh of course the story that was panning out uh and as usual as we have seen information becomes available faster via social media uh via the alternate platforms such as telegram and x faster than it does in the mainstream media. And that's especially the case where the police, the government agencies uh, purposefully hold back information for whatever reason. And the fact that the attacker wasn't named initially, that allowed naturally for speculation in uh, the online space. People were speculating, wondering who was uh, this attacker, there was lots of speculation as to who his nationality was. Oh, sorry, who, who his nationality, who he belonged to, what his motivation was. Was it a religiously motivated attack? There was uh, the word that it was Jimmy the Junkie because he was wearing a Australian football jersey uh, and a kangaroo's jersey. And in fact, he was actually wearing footy shorts. Uh, but the situation at Bondi is, of course, a tragedy. And in fact, the Russian embassy was one of the first uh, to give condolences very quickly, unlike, of course, Penny Wong, when a tragedy occurred in, the, in a Russian shopping center, Crocus City Hall, uh, Penny Wong didn't give any condolences. The Russian embassy today made a statement, we extend the deepest condolences to all affected by the horrific stabbing attack at Westfield Bonner Junction in Sydney. Our thoughts are with the innocent victims and their families. We wish a speedy recovery to those injured. A nice comment from the Russian embassy and plenty of... Uh, uh, references, of course, to Russia with uh, this guy, Bollard Stories Man. Stories of bravery coming out today, not to mention that a senior female officer who confronted this attacker head on and managed to bring this situation under control. Michael and Ange, you can see it's still an active crime scene as we go to where we know. That was Bollard Man. Now, Bollard Man has uh, since been... Uh, absolutely gone viral and bonkers in the uh, media all over the world, in fact, especially in Russia. The Russians are very proud that a Russian-speaking person uh, was uh, involved as a person who uh, who showed bravery and courage in the face of uh, uh, this attacker. Uh, do we call him a terror attacker? I want to call him a terrorist because that's what he is. But in the media, they don't like the word terrorist when it comes to someone who's not Muslim. They only use that when it's something to do with Islam. And they're not calling him a terrorist. They're calling him attacker. Uh, a silent, uh, a suspect. And that's another thing which I think is wrong. Uh, why is the word terror or terrorism or terrorist only applied in, by the media and by the Western governments if it concerns somebody with connections to Islam? That's wrong. A terrorist can be any nationality. In fact, as Vladimir Putin mentioned, after the uh, Moscow Croker City Hall attacks, terrorists do not have nationality. They do not have a religion. And that's one thing where Vladimir Putin is right. Uh, and in the West, as we saw in the last 24 hours, plenty of people were jumping on the bandwagon of let's blame Muslims. Let's blame Muslims and let's not wait for any concrete evidence. If I said unconfirmed reports about certain characters, that's because unconfirmed report means it's not factual, it's not checked. But many people were jumping on the bandwagon, pointing the finger at Muslims, including TV presenter Julia Hartley Brewer who is just one of the many establishment commentators. And she refused to retract uh, her false imputations that the Bondi knife uh, attacker was, as she said, an Islamic terrorist. 
Now that by uh, by a few hours ago, that was six point nine million views already on the platform X, where she was using the word Islamic terrorist. And there's no repercussion for these people. Some people are upset that uh, Ben Cohen's name was thrown around, that David Irvin's name was thrown around. And these two people are completely innocent, have nothing to do with this event. For, by uh, some way or another, their names appeared as people that might look like the suspect or some somehow match the profile of the suspect by chance and by speculation. I did comment on that. I said, these are unconfirmed reports that are floating around. Key word again, being unconfirmed. And of course, there's been lots of tit for tat all over uh, the media. Uh, Avi Emini, our old mate Avi Emini, calling for uh, Aussie Cossack to be sued because he used the word unconfirmed reports. Well, what about all Avi Emini as his mates talking about uh, Hamas and Islam ter Islamic terrorism being blamed for the attack? Where's the retraction? Where's the apology? I'm happy to put my hand up and say, well, that was not factual information. That was unconfirmed information because the bloke may have looked like somebody uh, with another name. And that's a normal process when there's no information uh, in the public sphere. The public is speculating. The pu uh, speculation is running rife. People are looking for answers, right? But those people who pointed the finger at the Muslims, where is the apology to the Muslims? It wasn't the Muslims. In fact, they should say thank you to the Muslim community for copying all of this um, criticism and attacks. It was nothing to do with them at all. Full stop. Nothing to do with them. This bloke uh, who was eventually named uh, as the attacker is a 40-year-old man from uh, Queensland. He's a degenerate uh, from Queensland. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, he has nothing at all to do with any sort of uh, anything to do with Islam or Hamas or anything at all. And it's just a shame that his name, jo Joel Couchy, C-A-U-C-H-I, uh, was uh, a person uh, who is just, uh, according to the media and the authorities, someone who suffers from mental health issues. Okay, so mental health, that means he's not a terrorist. Don't use the T word. Don't use the terror word. I think that's wrong. What do you think in the comment section? What do you think? Why is the word terrorist only applied to certain people? People are watching from Greece. Hello to Greece. People are watching from Dubrovnik, Croatia, and of course, uh, Geelong, uh, a lovely place to be watching from. And in regards to the, an update to that story of the Geelong uh, kid called Noah who is selling Russian military uh, paraphernalia, which was stolen from corpses of Russian soldiers, uh, we have information that he has recommenced those activities. So if you're in Geelong, get in contact with me and we're going to do something about that. We're going to get to the bottom of that. Uh, that's very, very uh, bad to do that. This kid in Geelong selling uh, torture videos of Russian soldiers being tortured by Ukrainian Nazis. This is a kid in Geelong doing that. Uh, very wrong. Very wrong like Penny Wong. Penny Wong, another person who uh, didn't give condolences in time uh, to the Russian Croker City Hall Moscow attacks. And he, of course, uh, the Russian embassy in Australia very quickly gave condolences to the Bondi Westfields attacks, leading the way and showing that the Russians are the adult in the room. Again, coming back to that story about Bollard Man, Bollard Man uh, was, again, by Channel 7, was announced to be Russian. It was Channel 7 that said Bollard Man was Russian. And that's where the first uh, information about him being Russian came Crude from. Incredible vision um, of a guy who I'm told was actually yelling out in Russian, step away, step away. He was the one holding the bollards there, trying to prevent him from moving any further. So just so many stories of bravery coming out today, not to mention that a senior female officer who confronted this attacker head on and managed to bring this situation under control. Now, bollard man... I, I, honestly, even though it's gone viral everywhere in the media, it's only Channel 7 that said he was Russian. Again, Channel 7 is the same one that said Ben Cohen, the poor kid, uh, was responsible for this attack. So they're not having a very good 24 hours, the Channel 7 crew. Now the Daily Telegraph is saying that the Bondi Westfield hero, Bollard Man, uh, has been revealed to have Ukrainian roots. It doesn't make sense either because his name is Silas Despreur. Have we got the uh, Despreur? 
Have we got the pronunciation on D-E-S-P-R-E-A-U-X. Let me know in the comment section if you speak French and that's the way to pronounce his name. But he was actually screaming in French. So there's an exclusive bombshell uh, truth bomb for you. I'm happy to acknowledge that probably the guy wasn't Russian. But Channel 7 said he was Russian because the poor girl from Channel 7, the reporter, was so overwhelmed she probably couldn't understand the difference between Russian and French language. Therefore, she just said he must be Russian. But the Russians took that, ran with it, and Bollard Man has gone viral in Russia. Russians are very happy that, uh, once again, Russians are fighting terrorism, whether it be in Syria, whether it be in Ukraine, whether it be uh, in Australia. Russians seem to be on the scene. Uh, so we'll accept that uh, uh, allegation. Uh, thank you. Thanks to Channel 7. But Channel 7, of course, uh, this is the damaging footage from Channel 7 uh, that was aired where they did uh, misidentify the attacker. Here it is. No idea how to hide from him. As for the attacker, 40-year-old Benjamin Cohen, he is known to police. Uh, he, his, his motives are not yet known. He was working on his own. Uh, terrorism has been ruled out. For the attacker, 40-year-old Benjamin Cohen, for the attacker, 40-year-old Benjamin Cohen, for the attacker, 40-year-old Benjamin Cohen, he is known to police. Go. I'm sorry to repeat that, but that's Channel 7. Now, when I, when I commented on this, remember, I said unconfirmed that there are reports circulating so please don't shoot the messenger those people who are getting uh, upside and getting upset and getting their knickers in a knot on x and other platforms saying ozzy kozak uh should be sued for defamation well again the word unconfirmed means uh, not factual and not accurate and unconfirmed that's why you say unconfirmed if you're not sure of something but of course channel 7 blurted that out on sunrise on federal television and I would imagine that uh, the family of Ben Cohen and Ben Cohen himself, who I'm told is a is a law-abiding, good person, a good standing uh, from a good, strong community uh, with a good family, nothing to do with this event at all. Nothing to do at all, right? Uh, Channel 7 probably will get sued for defamation. Probably. And it'd probably be a good case. It'd be a quick settlement case uh, for naming or misidentifying that name. Uh, some comments in the comment section. People are talking about RV Emini. Well, what else have we got here? Uh, a lot of uh, comments on there. Keep them coming. I can see well, Gold Coast is tuning in. And many people on here are upset as well at the way the media has handled this. Uh, but has RV apologized is a question. Has he apologized? Well, there you go. I'm happy to apologize. It wasn't Jimmy the Junkie. It wasn't David Irvine. It wasn't Ben Cohen, even though Channel 7, 7 said it was. It's, a, it's okay. I admitted actually from the get-go that it's unconfirmed. Can Avi Yemeni and his associates on the pro-Israeli lobby, can they accept that they were wrong and they were out of place to straight away point the finger at the Muslim community, right? They should apologize to the Muslim community. But no, I don't think it's possible. I wouldn't see anywhere... Uh, in a scenario I couldn't imagine where RVM would apologize to the Muslim community of Australia, even though they should be apologized to. Why not? Why not? What have we got here? Uh, plenty of people uh, very upset about this. Here's the question. I posted it before Channel 7. That is a true story. I did. But it was already circling. There was 50,000 tweets with Ben Cohen's name last night. Now, of course, observing the situation... I needed to uh, keep an eye on things. And there was a few different scenarios. So I said, there are unconfirmed reports circulating. There you go. Ozzy Kozak is not the source of the information. Ozzy Kozak is purely uh, commentating on what the speculation is, but reminding and warning the audience, responsibly warning that these reports are unconfirmed. Benjamin Cohen should sue their uh, Farkin asses, says Sula Bear. Well, um, absolutely. Look, The Guardian is going to run a hit piece against me, I imagine. Uh, that's why we were late to start the show. And uh, Sunday shows are much better, aren't they? It's a, tell me, guys, in the comment section, do you prefer Sundays to Saturday nights? I think uh, that definitely Sundays, everyone's much more settled in. And uh, it's a great evening to get together. Uh, here we go. We've got people from Geelong. I remember your face from Separation Street, Bills Park. I'm friends with Izzy. The good old days in Bell Park, Separation Street. Uh, say hello to all the great small businesses on Separation Street, including Sakita Meats. It's the best butcher in Geelong, I heard. So Sunday is better. I agree. I agree. 
Another person's from Edelong. You remember me from Edelong? There you go. <laughs> Say hello to everyone in Edelong, Edelong including uh, the Mantra in Edelong and the Edelong Hotel and the uh, Gladys Berejiklian's Cousin Cafe in the Edelong Mall. That's That's gone a long way back. You know Gladys Berejiklian's cousin? She's, she looks identical to Gladys. She's got a little cafe there. It's quite a nice cafe. Some nice shops there. And Mr. Klaus and all of his friends and all the good people in Edelong. Big uh, say hello to you. Now, speculation about the female police officer. Guys, this lady, and this is one thing I did call first and got it right, and I did say it's confirmed. Inspector Amy Scott, I think she's a good lady. I think, you know, you've got to give credit where credit is due. Everyone knows that I had tit for tats with the police, and I was one of their biggest critics, and they were one of my biggest critics, and we were chasing each other. Sometimes the cops chase me. Sometimes I chase the cops, as you see in the videos in the beginning of every show. Uh, but you got to give credit to Inspector Amy Scott. So when I heard that it was a female inspector, uh, and, I, and there's not many female inspectors, especially working at Rose Bay Police Station or Waverley Police Station. The reason I know that is because this is the closest police station to the Russian consulate where I'm holed up. I know it's probably, what, 900 metres away from here. And uh, Amy Scott, she's a very good lady at facilitating uh, community action, including the Russian election. She was very helpful uh, at uh, keeping the peace on the streets around the consulate uh, when we have events and we had events to support Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, the police said, look, we're not political. You're allowed to do your rally and you've got your paperwork in order. Uh, we don't mind what you say and what you do as long as uh, uh, we can be on the same page. So that's the way it works. So well done to Amy Scott. She was the lady on the scene and uh, she was uh, there first. Uh, she shot the uh, suspect. Now, it's very difficult to be a policeman or a policewoman or a police officer is probably the right way to say it, and to shoot a suspect. You could imagine it's traumatizing. And, uh, in fact, Amy Scott uh, was, uh, this is not the first time she's uh, had these sort of uh, acts of bravery. In fact, way back in 2019, um, Amy Scott was a sergeant back then, and uh, Amy Scott was awarded a commendation for demonstrating courage and devotion to duty. So there's no doubt that Inspector Amy Scott will probably uh, very soon be uh, promoted to superintendent. Would not be surprised. And I can say she definitely deserves that. Although we have our differences with the police, you've got to give credit where credit is due. And look, the Russian uh, Moscow Croker City Hall terrorist. I mean, the, the Russian cops captured the, the terrorist, cut his ear off. Electric, you know, allegedly something else, a little bit of uh, uh, forceful interrogation, questioning. Uh, but Amy Scott let off a few rounds and finished him off. So a lot of people are happy with that. What can I say? Uh, they're happy that the person was neutralized straight away and no further shenanigans were allowed to continue in that regard. And it was only after Amy Scott had uh, put this uh, lunatic out of his misery uh, this uh, 40-year-old Queenslander wearing a rugby jersey and footy shorts uh, by the name of uh, Joe Couchy. Uh, it was lucky that he didn't uh, harm any more children. I mean, he stabbed the baby, for goodness sake. What kind of a sick bastard had you have to be to kill, a, to, not to kill, to attempt to kill a baby? You kill the baby's mother and then you try and kill the baby. Be absolutely not on. Worse than a terrorist. Well, in fact, why don't we call him a terrorist? I want to ask you guys in the comment section. How is this not a terrorist? Guys, he walks like a terrorist. He talks like a terrorist. I know people that have been accused of terrorism who are not terrorists, right? When I was in jail, there's a bloke in the cell next to me. And if you want to have a look at my uh, a very interesting interview with him, we did a two-hour, 53 minutes last night on X, Aussie Cossack on X. Have a look at it. And I actually speak to this guy in air with this uh, convicted, uh, should we call him a terrorist? I don't think he's a terrorist. He, he got in trouble for doing a meme online posting a meme which the government didn't like. They charged him with terrorism-related offences. And in the end, uh, he was uh, released after four years. And uh, I remember him from jail. He remembers me. And uh, we had him on the on the show last night on X on Spaces. So have a look. That's recorded there. Uh, people want to see Syrian Girl. Syrian Girl uh, and, of course, our uh, very uh, much-awaited guest for tonight's show. Uh Syrian girl, I think she's on audio only, but let's let's see if we can speak to her. Syrian girl, uh, can you uh, hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? We can hear the voice of Syrian girl, but we cannot see the image of Syrian girl. 
You may see the image of Spring Girl as soon as I get home. I'm sorry, I uh, stuffed up a bit with the timing, but it may be 10 minutes. Spring Girl, never admit guilt, never give me guilt. What you should say is you've been uh, battling the Zionist forces with one arm, and with the other arm, you've been wrestling a crocodile. And then everyone will think you're very impressive. That's literally what's what's happening right now. It's exactly what's happening. But I there don't you know go. if you, you know, but uh, we were called out, you and I, on on Sky News. Sorry, it's, so good. it's kind of comical in a way. Because they're blaming me or us or like you specifically for Sky News, uh, sorry, for Channel 7 coming up with the name Benjamin Cohen. Okay, so, so we're being blamed for telling Channel 7 the wrong information, right? Isn't that good? That means they admit, at least they admit that the mainstream media is so far gone that they use uh, independent uh, social media personalities for their national news. Is that the admission that Channel 7 is making here? You know what? I reckon it wasn't even us. I, I, the, the name was circulating, right? And I think I, I never actually mentioned the name until I quoted Channel 7 like saying it. I never said the words Benjamin Cohen until after Channel 7 put it out there. And you, in, in your situation, you said unconfirmed. They actually said confirmed. So by that time, I was like, oh, yeah, this definitely confirmed. You know, Channel 7 can't be wrong, right? Which is a silly kind of thing for me to think um, in the first place. But and girl, we, want, we want to hear your side of the story. We look forward to seeing your uh, video uh, shortly. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll come back to that story. This is a developing story, and it, it is all over okay. the social media and media. Uh, this situation. Uh, Channel 7 says that they got the information from Aussie Kozak and Syrian Girl. Is that really their defense? Well, I did say unconfirmed reports. You can't you can't blame Aussie Kozak if he was commenting on the speculation and warning with a disclaimer unconfirmed. Channel 7 goes and takes it and says it's this guy. Let's let's blame him. That is just absolutely irresponsible. Uh, Peter Craig Hardgrave uh, says that mainstream media is fake news. And uh, there was uh, many promotions being made by the mainstream media. Uh, people are saying that uh, it's pure gibberish, the mainstream media. Uh, thank you. I, I hope to have a good sense of humor. With 500 days in the consulate without a good sense of humor, you'll end up going crazy. But uh, we'll get back to Siren Girl and back to that, that crazy story in Australia. Uh, Karen Webb, the police commissioner, why isn't she calling a spade a spade? Why isn't this guy a terrorist if he committed a terrorist act? Is it because he's not Muslim? Is that why he's not a terrorist? We don't have fears for that person holding an ideation. In other words, that it's not a terrorism incident. Is that, is that person in the Andrew is known to you? Um, he's known to law enforcement, um, but he's, we're waiting to identify him formally. Thank you. Thank you. confident that if it is this man, this is not a, a terrorism incident? We, as I said, the investigation will be ongoing for many, many days, but there are elements that we understand at this point in time that, that don't indicate that. There you go. So I don't know what to make of that, but I'm not very pleased about it. The, the guy's a terrorist. A terrorist doesn't have a nationality. And uh, I want to hear your opinion, but let's bring in our, our special guest for tonight, uh, Mr. Arnold uh, Develay. Uh, all the way from Moscow, in fact, joining us. Arnold, welcome to the Aussie Cossack Show. Hello, thank you for having me. Uh, always a pleasure to uh, be invited to, uh, I should say, the legendary Cossack Show, already by now. <laughs> Arnold, thank you. Uh, humbled. It's a, a pleasure to have you, an honor to have you. Look, for our audience, uh, I know a little bit about you. Uh, one of the highlights of your career, you were one of the lawyers for Saddam Hussein. And before the... Uh, the sh the normies uh, watching this fall off their chairs. How can you have the person who defended Saddam? Why don't I give you the opportunity and uh, you can give us a rough background of your capacity uh, and your involvement in uh, international politics and uh, your capacity as a uh, political commentator and uh, legal expert. Well, first, uh, let's get things out of the way uh, to the extent, you know, as some people might be... Uh obfuscated as to uh, uh, my clients well you know lawyers defense uh, defendants that's what we do and more importantly they try to defend the rule of law 
and uh, if uh, everyone recalls uh, the uh, period leading up to the uh, trial of Saddam Hussein, as it were, uh, was littered with violation of international law and uh, a campaign of lies uh, basically was the uh, predicate of a, an illegal invasion and with the illegal invasion on false pretense uh, came a whole slew of uh, illegal uh, acts including uh, uh, the uh, occupation, illegal occupation of Iraq, the uh, dismembering of uh, the, the entire state structure leading to uh, the creation and some would say with American nudging of uh, what became known as ISIS and uh, Daesh in those uh, in those US camps, uh, military camps, uh, with consequences that we still uh, uh, witness today. Uh, but also, last but not least, the creation uh, in violation of the Geneva Convention um, of the uh, so-called uh, Iraqi Special Tribunal. So uh, basically, when uh, I I was first obviously informed about the uh, capture of the Iraqi president on uh, December 13th, 2003. But what really got my blood rolling was uh, when I saw, uh, was on July 1st, 2004, on one of the main uh, US networks, uh, him being presented to a then 35 year old judge who had been trained by uh, a US uh, uh, subcontracted uh, legal experts, so to speak. Uh, over a three months period for something that requires years and years of uh, training. I'm talking about international criminal law, uh, as it were. And uh, he was presented to this 35 year old judge who had never dealt with international criminal cases, uh, especially political cases like this one. And uh, he was not even assisted with an attorney. And he was uh, required to sign uh, some papers, uh, which he refused, obviously. Uh, the former president of Iraq, uh, although he never graduated, uh, attended uh, the law faculty of Cairo back in the 1950s. So he understood the implication of signing some papers. But uh, useless to say, uh, you know, uh, there was in my head a kind of a contrast between uh, what I had been taught in law school uh, in the US, which was, you know, the rule of law and democracy and transparency and good faith, and et cetera, et cetera. And then seeing this very government uh, violating the UN Charter uh, and deciding to basically collect what is colloquially known in, uh, um, in English as a policy, uh, co the coalition of the willing to go get the... Uh, I'm gonna throw this question to you. Yeah. Do you, do you. Would you agree with some people that say that Saddam Hussein was actually the good guy? And the Americans were the bad guys. I would say there's a, it's it's not really a, a question for me. I would say that if uh, one has to make a, a, a parallel, uh, Saddam Hussein uh, was the Zelensky of the 1980s. He was used by the Western uh, uh, powers as a, as a proxy to basically contain the uh, revolution in Iran, and they gave him everything he needed. Uh, they Provided him with cash and weapons, political support. Of course, the, who does that remind us of? That reminds us of Zelensky. When he was exactly. useful, they gave him cash, weapons, support. Same they did to Gaddafi. Uh, the same they did to the Taliban. The same they did to Osama bin Laden. When the US, when the United States wants to use someone to their advantage against another opponent, against the Soviet Union or against the Russians, that's what happens. Well, we know how the story ends for Zelensky because it's going to end probably similar to what happened to Saddam. And you, being Saddam's lawyer, would have seen that firsthand. Uh, we'll, uh, we won't uh, ponder too much on the Saddam Hussein factor because, as we can see today's breaking news all around the world, we have the issue of Iran unleashing this retaliatory uh, strike against Israel. And the reason why it's a retaliatory strike and not just a strike is because it's safe to say that Israel started this by bombing a uh, Iranian uh, diplomatic building uh, in Syria, what were they expecting? Now, uh, Ira Iranians are on the street celebrating. They're very happy about it. Uh, party the Iranians. The Iranians are celebrating, saying it's a great thing that they've hit back. It's a source of, I would say, uh, national pride. Uh, Iran has launched Iran hundreds tonight of missiles. launched a swarm of drones at Israel uh, as air missiles. defenses lit up the sky and exploded over Jerusalem. 
For the last several minutes, we've seen these flares streaking all across the skies over Jerusalem. And now for the first time, we're hearing the air raid sirens. It's a developing attack that is unfolding in slow motion. The drones take several hours to travel roughly 700 miles from Iran to Israel, giving the Israeli military and its allies time to divert, jam, or shoot them down. We are closely monitoring Iranian killer drones that are en route to Israel sent by Iran. This is a severe and dangerous escalation. Our defensive and offensive capabilities are at the highest level of readiness ahead of this large-scale attack from Iran. Iran says the attack is revenge for an airstrike on Iran's embassy compound in Damascus nearly two weeks ago that killed seven members of Iran's Revolutionary Guard. Now, look, I've, I've got my own sort of uh, take on this, this whole situation that's uh, developing. And I want to run it by you, uh, Arnold. I, I'm not sure if this is the correct take because I'm not an expert on that part of the world. Uh, I mean, you, you people like Sarah Ingle, even perhaps Sarah, would have a lot more insight uh, into Iran, Israel, Syria, Jordan. But I'll give you one angle. I could be completely wrong. But I'll give you my angle. I've been uh, looking at this situation for the last 24 hours. Do you think it's possible at all that Iran may have done this attack? Israel knows that they were going to do it. The US knows that they were going to do it. Iran launches its missiles, uh, its drones, hundreds of them uh, at targets. Uh, including in the desert, including uh, non-civilian targets, so not 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 conducting a specific massacre uh, or targeting uh, Israeli life, more of a show of force, warning everybody that yes, the drones are leaving Iran. We're announcing yes, the missiles are now being launched. Yes, they are now crossing over Iraq. They're crossing over Syria. They're crossing over Jordan. Then Jordan says we're going to mobilize. We're going to shoot them down. And Iran threatens back and Israel threatens back and back and forth. And it's all very PR-like. It's all playing out in the media. And then after everything, after everything, you, the United States encourages Israel not to retaliate anymore. And Iran itself says that uh, they have completed their attack and they do not wish to continue it. This is a quote from the Iranian chief of staff, but we will respond forcefully if Israel targets our interests. Basically, launching an attack and then de-escalating and saying, right, that's enough. We're not going to escalate any further. This is not going to turn into a war. And Israel responds by saying, we'll plan a response. But the United States is telling Israel, don't worry about a response. Let's call it a day. Is this a wild conspiracy theorist or is it a valid angle to say that uh, all the sides involved have agreed that uh, that was retaliation and for, for uh, Israel's attack on Iran's uh, embassy in Syria, Iran's done its retaliation. The Iranian people, uh, the media have been satisfied uh, by the strong Iranian response because Iran can't not respond. Iran must respond and it must show a tough response. Is there any truth in what I'm saying that this was perhaps a situation which was, uh, I don't want to use the word controlled or scripted, but everyone knew what, what their job was. What do you think, Arnold? Well, to be sure, this reminds us of what happened in uh, the wake of the uh, cowardly assassination of the late General Soleimani. Uh, General Soleimani was a, uh, you know, a, a legendary figure in the resistance axis. He uh, helped uh, train, uh, you know, a lot of uh, factions of the resistance axis. And he was uh, basically the father of the asymmetrical uh, hybrid warfare, you know, that was inaugurated in 2006 by Hezbollah. Uh, so what happened back then, if you remember, uh, he was assassinated along with uh, Al Mohandes, his uh, companion, uh, the head of the uh, Shahid uh, al-Shabi in uh, Iraq. And uh, on uh, this was on uh, November, uh, January uh, 3rd, 2020. And five days later, uh, the Iranian uh, retaliated uh, by uh, massively bombing the uh, Ain al-Assad base in uh, southwest Iraq, uh, uh, therefore uh, uh, in occurring, you know, incurring uh, 
over 100 uh, casualties, although the U.S. media uh, took great care in uh, uh, characterizing the uh, you know, so-called casualties as so-called head injuries or trauma and uh, leaking information on that in that regard uh, slowly but surely in a progressive manner. Uh, and Trump himself actually was on uh, the air yesterday and he confirmed that they coordinated with the Iranian and they knew the Iranian had to uh, strike back. They were going to strike back and they somehow tried to uh, coordinate uh, the, the um, Iranian uh, 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 retaliation in a way that so, would I'm, I'm right escalation. There was some, there was some uh, level of coordination, and they knew the Iranians are going to retaliate, and yes. they just wanted them to retaliate. Don't go crazy. Don't make it World War Three. Do your retaliation, and then go back to peace. So I am right. Yes, indeed, I confirm. But there's one difference here. The difference is a guy named Benjamin Netanyahu, and he's the wild uh, card in this whole equation. And he doesn't want to play ball. This is actually what we're facing here. We're facing someone who's got corruption cases, uh, you know, galore, uh, and who doesn't want to go to jail, doesn't want to face the music. And so uh, he's basically doubling down. He's being hostage in his own cabinet by people that are completely nerdy, who uh, believe in some kind of uh, messianic uh, uh, prophecy. And, uh, you know, Basically, they, they are trying to nudge him to double down in this whole thing. So uh, this is actually the, the main difference, I would say, between 2020 and, and, and 2024. Well, wh where to from now? So Iran has said it's not going to attack anymore. Do you think Israel is just going to cop that, uh, in basically, you know, strong punch in the face and not retaliate? Are we... Uh, are we confident that uh, the United States has told Israel, look, you're going to have to accept that retaliation, cop it, because Iran's been told don't do any more? Is, is, that would be a power play by the United States. If the United States is really involved in that, where they can be that regional, uh, re sorry, regional uh, policeman and they can say, well, you're allowed to fight back this much, you're allowed to retaliate this much, that is commendable from a US point of view. Is that the case? Well, this is what they are trying to push forward as a narrative. But uh, I think within Israel, uh, the Biden administration is more increasingly perceived as uh, meddling and trying to operate as some kind of regime change. Uh, this has been actually reinforced when uh, Benny Gantz, who is himself a member of the uh, war cabinet, uh, paid a visit to the United States and the uh, uh, Tel Aviv regime did not provide him with any kind of institutional uh, support during his visit and the people that he might have met there. So there's this notion, and even including among the most ardent Zionists in the U.S., that the Biden administration is actually an enemy of the uh, of the uh, Tel Aviv regime as uh, currently uh, constituted. So this creates this kind of defiance and, uh, and burdens Netanyahu to actually take matters into his own hands and not really pay attention to what Washington will be saying. This is this is the danger, actually, this, from my perspective, anyway. And we already have uh, an announcement from a senior official from the Israeli regime saying that they will retaliate within 48 hours. So it will be interesting to see what happens. Uh, what, what's your prediction? What can the Israelis do potentially to retaliate? And how do we, how do we uh, prepare for their retaliation? Uh, if they well, retaliate, and they've been told not to, right? They've been told not to. Is, is that, is been, fair to say, the U.S. has said to the Israelis, don't retaliate again. Well, as you know, there's a presidential campaign going on in the U.S. right now. And the last thing Joe Biden needs uh, is another, you know, foreign policy disaster to, to, to unfold, essentially. And after Afghanistan in 2021, uh, Ukraine is looking increasingly like, a, you know, a failed project. Uh, the last thing he needs is, uh, you know, a full-blown regional war in the Middle East. But uh, unfortunately, uh, like I said, Netanyahu uh, is not someone who uh, is keen to be influenced by, uh, you know, Washington as it is now. Uh, and and uh, he's fighting for his political life, if not his, real, his, his personal life. Uh, because owing to what's been going on the last six months, uh, there's not a place on earth that the guy, you know, would pretend to go to without having to look over his shoulder now. So he's getting to a point now, uh, he's, you know, in his 70s, 
uh, you know, he has this kind of uh, uh, feeling that he's invested with a special mission, uh, and the special mission is Eretz Israel. It's to expand the bond, you know, the borders of the state. Let's remind our listeners that uh, there is no constitution in uh, Israel, and so the borders are not legally defined. Uh, their their uh, constitution is the Bible. So, to the extent the promise is to build a third temple and expand the borders beyond the Euphrates, uh, and that Netanyahu, King Bibi, as you know, they call him there, is the man to do it. Uh, to the extent he, uh, on top of it, is fighting for. Uh, you know, is uh, his political life and 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 uh, facing, like I say, jail time. So you know, a substantial jail time for for corruption cases. Uh, he has nothing to lose, and that's that makes it a dangerous situation. Now, what will they try to do? Well, he himself has been saying for twenty years that Iran was trying to develop a nuclear bomb. So they've got this whole uh, protocol in place to uh, send F thirty five and try to use bunker buster bombs. To penetrate, you know, the underground uh, nuclear civil nuclear facilities in Iran, uh, but the Iranians have been uh, getting uh, ready for that. Uh, you know, the Iranians are know exactly what uh, what's going on. The, what's interesting is to see what will happen in terms of the logistical aspect, because uh, owing to the distance and the type of bomb the F thirty five has to carry, uh, they cannot uh, go drop the ordinance and go back they have to actually land in azerbaijan they have special ag agreement with azerbaijan for the case that in this case uh, uh if they were to move forward with this operation they would drop the ordinance but then they would need to fly into their base in azerbaijan to refuel before going back to tel aviv or to uh, uh ramon air base as it were so uh, it will be interesting to see uh, what how the consequences could be if they decide to go ahead with this uh, for uh, you know uh, uh, the Caucasus and all the uh, former uh, Re Soviet Republic, uh, Azerbaijan being uh, you know uh, in this area that Russia is really concerned about some kind of destabilization as well. We have uh, Armenia and uh, you know Azerbaijan, the uh, Israeli are there as well, and they need Azerbaijan to carry out this operation against Iran. Very complicated, as the whole Middle East situation is, but we're grateful for your comments, um, uh, Arnold. Stay with us. Uh, we're going to get back to uh, this topic and answer more questions in the comment section. Plenty of people, thousands, in fact, watching now live. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe, like, and share, and leave your comments in the comment section. Uh, what is going to happen next? Uh, God only knows, and uh, maybe uh, who else knows? There's the question. Who knows what's going to happen next? Because certainly... They seem to be sticking to some type of uh, gentleman's agreement to avoid World War III, to allow Iran and Israel to have a little fight, to attack each other here and there, so they don't lose face in front of their own populations. This is one of the most important things. You can see how the Iranian population is reacting. Uh, people celebrating on the streets and uh, uh, speaking of celebrations, let's get Syrian girls take on this Syrian girl. Uh, welcome. It's good to see you. Hi. Thanks for having me on the show. Hello, Arnold. Lovely to see you as well. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? So, you go, what, what do you reckon? Is this a celebration for the, uh, what, what, what would we call it, the pro Palestinian world? I would say so. I think it's a relief for a lot of people after suffering for six months of um, a genocide where there's been no recourse for Israel. Finally, you know, this is something that will maybe bring them to heal. And Iran acted according to international law. They struck military targets. They didn't go for any civilian targets. And uh, it just goes to show you how they, they do war in a clean way, unlike the Israelis who are literally committing a genocide before the international uh, view. And people have said that this is like, you know, at the moment it's the end of Ramadan and people are celebrating Eid, uh, but Eid is over. It's like Christmas is over. It's like Christmas is actually now anyway. Siringo, hang on. I've got a call from the ABC Live. Should I take it on the air? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, right, by the uh, way. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. Just uh, who is it? Sorry, speaking. Uh, yeah, my name is Kevin. I'm a journalist with ABC News. How are you? Good, thank you, ABC. What can I do for you? Hey, uh, yeah, I just look, I just wanted to. Uh, I'm just doing a story about the Bondi killer. I know you were posting about him quite a lot, um, just as it was kind of unfolding. And yeah, you rightly called out that it wasn't an Islamic. Um, uh, that you know, a 
the initial theories about it being an ideological attack you were absolutely right about but um i wanted to uh kind of i'm doing a kind of timeline of how it kind of unfolded and i wanted to ask you about um when you kind of when benjamin cohen was named and i just wanted to see how you kind of came across that name okay okay uh, you, are you recording me no i'm not you, you can if you like is it okay if i record you yeah, no worries. Do you want me to call you back on Zoom so we can just have both? We can both see that we're recording and we both have the same version. Um, <laughs> well, well, you don't have to come back on Zoom. I'm I'm happy to uh, speak to you uh, audio way, uh, but tell yeah, me, just, just give, give me a few. Uh, it, it's um, all right. It's all right. I've got it covered on this side. I can send you a copy later. So tell me, no what's worries. the what's the question? Yeah, I'm just wondering how you came across the name Ben Cohen, or where did you first hear it from? Look, there was much speculation in the media and the social media floating around uh, mm -hmm. all over the place. And mm -hmm. uh, you at the ABC News, uh, you can you can see all of that. Uh, there was it wasn't uh, wasn't unusual for people to speculate because the mm -hmm. police did not release a name. Mm -hmm. it took him quite a long time. I think there was fifty thousand tweets made, in fact, about Ben Cohen. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I simply mentioned, uh, observed that uh, p there were unconfirmed reports speculating that he could be um, somehow uh, linked or identified. Uh, I don't know who the bloke is. It's it's unfortunate that he's been mentioned like that. Uh, there were other people. I mean, people are making a big deal about Ben uh, Ben Cohen. What about poor Jimmy the Junkie? Where's the sympathy for him? People were blaming Jimmy. <laughs> I'm curious, where did you, where did you, Jimmy the Junkie from? Because Jimmy the, I, I Jim... saw three polls in your Telegram. Jimmy the um, Junkie, you don't, know, you don't know who Jimmy the Junkie is? Uh, enlighten me. Don't you watch Houses? Uh, no, I don't, unfortunately. Isn't Houses on ABC and you work for ABC? You know what? Of all the people, you probably watch more ABC than me most days. <laughs> oh, well, look, I used to watch uh, Houses, and you know when I watched Houses when I was in jail? Uh, it says, you know, in jail, you've got nothing to do, watch TV. And that's the only time I watched mainstream television. So there's yeah. plenty of fat pizza and how's those? I think it was ABC or it could have been SBS. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. What's relevant is that uh, Jimmy the Junkie was named. No one's apologizing to Jimmy the Junkie. Also, a bloke called David Irvine, who was uh, uh, accused of being a junkie from Campsie, another person who was caught up. No one's asking about him. Everyone's only asking about Ben Cohen. And there were plenty of people who were being potentially named or suspected, and so forth and so forth. Uh, but you got to you got to admit that in all of my commentary, the key word appeared unconfirmed. And unconfirmed, what does that mean? Not confirmed as to truth or validity, as yeah. per the Oxford Dictionary. Yeah. Okay. Uh, look, I will say one thing that I've noticed. I've been tracking how it went. It wasn't until you kind of put it out there that it really really kicked off you know if i was to put it on a bar graph and see how many mentions there were the before and after you talked about was quite significant in terms of you know how popular it became and appreciating that you did say the word unconfirmed i can see it uh i mean like this guy hey hang on what are you are you saying that it was only until i touched this story that it actually hit the virality uh, I would say it definitely became more popular. You, I mean, you would agree that you're a pretty influential figure. No, nah, I've only got influence uh, uh, over my show, the Aussie Cossack Show, and the guests mm -hmm. I have on there, especially live guests. And I yeah. always love to invite people on the show to speak to them live. I think it's the mm -hmm. best way. Don't you agree? I mean, I prefer speaking to people directly, which is why I am appreciating our conversation. Um, I think you're not the only one who's appreciating our conversation. I think everyone appreciates it that you've reached out today on, yeah. a, on a Sunday after five o'clock. Yes, I do apologize for that. No, no, no. You're always welcome. It's the best time to reach me, you know, being on the air on Sunday. So, uh, yeah. but what, 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 uh, what are you insinuating that I, I made this viral? I'm, I'm, I'm not insinuating anything. I'm just kind of war like, are you aware? Do you agree or do you think that you had a big impact in naming this guy or getting that name out there? Like, it's just a, it's just an observation I made, and you may or may not agree with that. Um, I'm only looking at it like a line graph, you know what I mean? Right. So on your line graph, you see Aussie Kozak uh, retweets this, and then he goes bananas. Yeah, if I was to put it all on a timeline, yes. What can I say? I, I came across that information, and as a responsible, independent journalist, 
I warned the public that this is unconfirmed. I warned people. I said, beware, yeah. this is unconfirmed. This is not factual. Yeah. And I made note of it that there is speculation. Speculation is brewing. And uh, uh, unlike Channel 7, who just blamed the bloke, the poor guy, Ben Cohen, and his poor family, who have just been thrown under the bus, very irresponsible of them. And I did say unconfirmed. And you're a, you're a, you're a mainstream media journalist. You work for the government-funded ABC. Uh, you know, when you put the word unconfirmed in front of something, it insinuates that it's not factual or it's, it's in doubt. Is that right? Well, yes, by the literal definition. Yeah, so what do you reckon? Uh, I think that my uh, contribution to that conversation uh, by making that, uh, you could say, viral, if, you, if, the, if that's what you're saying, was uh, in a responsible manner to warn people that this is, this is, not, this is not confirmed, ladies and gentlemen. Let's, uh, let's just wait and see what happens. But yeah. there were 50,000 tweets. You can't blame them all on me last night. I don't think all 50,000 tweets were mentioning Benjamin Cohen before you tweeted it. They were mentioning the Bondo attack. What, what do you think of a uh, Syrian girl, by the way? Uh, who? Sorry? Syrian girl. Uh, is that a Twitter account? Yeah, she's very, very influential. Far more influential than I am. Okay. I'm just a, I'm just a regular construction worker who happens to be locked in a Russian consulate. But Syrian yeah. girl, no, she's something else. She's, they call her the Queen of Western Australia. She's got a lot of influence on that side of, the, on that side of town. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I don't have an opinion on her. I'm still in my research phase. But uh, what do you think of her? Uh, Syrian girl, very popular, very popular. Uh, she's um, she's very, very uh, influential. That is, she, she, she's probably the the one pulling the strings in, in the Australian Parliament. Uh, Premier Roger Cook, I heard that she's uh, has the most influence over the Western Australian government. In fact, have you heard of Roger Cook? Yes. Well, Roger Cook, he's also the one who had, had, had liked to have a crack at anything to do with Russia. Uh, but look, what's your story going to be? Let me see if I can assist you. If you want to get a, I'm, I'm just literally trying to understand the exact start of how this guy uh, ended up being named in Channel Seven. Have you uh, asked Channel Seven? Yes, I have. They said it was a human error, but you know, people were saying about it beforehand, and I'm just trying to understand as best as I can where it started. I want to know who said the name Benjamin Cohen first so i uh, do you know where that came from i think it was um swirling around yeah, in speculation there was running rife and i observed the speculation and i commented on the speculation just as you are so you're about to write an article to talk about the speculation and it's very yeah, did similar you, did you did you see it on telegram instagram twitter first i get where you're going with this you're going to then say this is why we need to ban telegram because of this information oh i use telegram all the time it's fine I, i'm not saying that i'm just saying do, i want to know where you got it from that's all but hang on would you would you agree with me as an abc journalist that we need a freedom of speech platforms like x and telegram i yes i'm not i'm not this isn't a crack at any platform i'm literally just trying to understand who said benjamin Cohen first that's the only Look, question I, I care about i think channel seven needs to answer that question because even the way i reported on that i talked about the speculation and i said it's unconfirmed i didn't say i was the source I said, yeah. look at this. I, I'm not. I'm not saying they got it from you. I don't know where they got it from. If I had to be honest, so I'm trying to get to the bottom of that. But I, I'm wondering where you saw it from because maybe that person is the one who told Channel Seven. You know. So can I ask, like, did you see it on Telegram, Facebook? I, I just need to know what, where the genesis of this thing came from. Uh, we've got a question from the comment section. What is a woman? Hmm. Okay. Is the question. <laughs> That's the That's question. Nice of them. Yeah. Well, uh, people are blaming Channel 7 for human error, but that is not an excuse for a billion dollar company to confirm a guy. Okay. And it's also time for Bill from Hunters Hill to explain Channel 7's error. Okay. That's the question that sure. uh, people are asking. Uh, uh, and I, I completely agree with that. But at, at the end of the day, I'm calling you and I'm just trying to figure out do you know who named? Benjamin Cohen first or Ben Cohen first? All right. I'll, look, I'll answer, but you got to tell me something. Uh, how many jabs have you had, honestly? Uh, uh, what, do you mean like a vaccine? Yes, yes. Yeah, sure. I've had four. You had four? Mm. Okay. That, that, that's good. Look, at least you're honest. That's the main mm. thing, you know? Not everyone's perfect. You've had four. It's all right, you know? I was done for drink driving a few years ago. I'm happy to accept that. It's just... A fact of life. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Okay, cool. Great. 
And so you're going to ask my question if I gave you. Yeah, yeah. what was the question again? Now we made a deal. I'll, I'll, what yeah. was your question? Can you tell me where or who you first, where you first saw Benjamin Cohen? Do you know what platform it was? I think it could have been, uh, it could have, could have been Rebel News, but that's unconfirmed. Wait, uh, Rebel News, Avi Yemeni's Rebel News. Yeah, is that his name, Av Avi Yemeni? Yeah, that's the bloke. I think so. But that's also okay. unconfirmed, so there's no way to know. Exactly. Would res would respect Simeon. Like I, I I I see you feuding with him online about this. Like Ooh. you're acting a little bit surprised. Family feud. All right. You you you've uncovered me. You've got me there. You've got me. Yeah. You exposed the Aussie Cossack. You've seen. Yeah. Look, RV Emini has had a crack at me in the last few days. It's true. Um, it, it, it's quite outrageous the way he's attacking me. What did he say about me? Uh, from your recollection, uh, that you saw. Uh, I haven't spoken to him. I've just seen it on Twitter. Oh, you haven't so spoken I, to him. No, but I, as I said, I'm asking you. Well, well hang on. If you're going to ask me, just at least put into context, what, what was roughly RV saying about me on Twitter? I literally just saw you talking about, like, the name. Like, that's it. So, look, you know, I I called you. Um, if you want to answer, you want to answer. If not, that's fine. Uh, I appreciate you, the time, but, like, you know, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this. Like, so look, do you know? Look, yeah, uh, look, blame, look, 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 I know he didn't say it first. According, so. according to people like SWAT, uh, RV and Kozak were mutual journo mates. Is that yeah. the impression that you got? Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, people are saying that RV Eminem and I are actually friends. We're mutual mates. Okay, that's um, that's great. I, I'm like devastated that RV's, you know, thrown me under the bus and he's turned on me. I always thought I was in the good books with the Zionists. Okay. Uh, this is, if that's important to you, sure. I just really want to know, again, and if you, you don't have to answer. Like, I, if, if you don't know, you don't know. But I'm, I just kind of want to ask you, do you know where Benjamin Cohen first came from in Look. terms of the name? Because you also posted it, like a screenshot of a LinkedIn, like that appeared in your channels. So, you know, that's, did you have intelligence that this was the Ben Cohen? What do you mean by intelligence? You mean like, like a... did somebody say, hey, uh, this is to Ben Cohen, and then you reposted it, like a photo of this guy's LinkedIn. Oh, well, that's a very intimate question. You're asking me to reveal my sources of intelligence. Okay, you don't have to tell me your sources. Oh, no, I'll, listen, I'll, 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 look, listen, let's do a deal. I'm, we've got to get some trust going here. I'll tell you, right? But uh, Light Force wants to know, what are your pronouns? Mm. He slash him. Anyway. So, so he slash him. Okay, you, why, fair enough. Why did you come up with that LinkedIn? Like, where did that come from? Look, look, it might have just been uh, something that came across my desk in the daily Kremlin briefing. Uh, could have been sent over from Moscow, but uh, it might, might not have. That's also unconfirmed. I can't say exactly, but I can tell you one thing. I was just commentating on what was in the public domain already. And mm. do, you, do you agree with that? It was in the public domain. And my uh, reporting on it, in the context of look at this, there's speculation. This is unconfirmed. People are saying it's this guy. Okay, so but, that's 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 what your that's your position on this that you were just publicly commentating. No, I was actually I was the, I was the most I, to the, to that moment I was the most responsible out of all the commentators, and I was the first to actually call it out as being unconfirmed. So you got to give me that credit. Is that true or not? Would you agree? I don't know. Do you think that's true? I think it's true. I mean, when when is the first time when someone actually said, "Wait a second, guys, this is unconfirmed. It's not. Maybe it's not. Uh, it might be not, or it's unconfirmed." Who is the first person in Australia to say that? I don't know. Maybe you can help me out with that. Hmm. Well, it wasn't Avi Emini, was it? I, I, I'm not interested in Avi Emini in this conversation right now. Uh, I'm asking what you know. Look, it was all over uh, many channels, according to Darth X Zero. And um, what can I say? Uh, people have said, I mean, uh, Al-Qaeda has said, blame me, Kozak. Okay, let me just ask you one last question. I mean, this guy has had a really, really rough day. Do you have anything to say to him? Look, you know, uh, I think millions of Muslims uh, have had a rough day today, being blamed for this attack. Yeah. Okay, David Irvine, uh, the so-called junkie from Campsie, has been blamed for this attack. He's had yeah. a rough day. There's a whole raft of people who've been thrown under the bus here, mm -hmm. right? 
it's tragic yeah. and it's uh and i'll give him the same sympathy that i give all the muslims that were blamed for this attack okay. all of sydney's communities uh, western sydney's communities all the good law-abiding muslims who don't do terrorist attacks and that's basically all of them in australia we have we don't have terrorist attacks here the man monos incident was an isolated incident lunatic the man monos who's an associate of jamal dawood who ran for the united australia party under the uh, leadership of sue ellen uh, yeah. in the seat of reed but that's another story uh, None of the uh, Muslims are actually terrorists in Australia. They're actually good people, right? And they're good because most of them stood up against the jab. And uh, and I've got a lot of support in Western Sydney. You know, Some people say they're my stomping grounds. And I know that the Muslims in Western Sydney appreciate that I'm saying this, sticking up for them. One guy, Ben Cohen, gets blamed for the attack and everybody wants to cry. And everyone wants to have a carry on and this well, and that. Yeah, and would respect, like... David Irvine and Jimmy the Junkie appeared on the poll next to Benjamin Cohen. So if there was stuff being thrown at David Irvine and Jimmy the Junkie, like they all appeared on your channel. So if David and Jimmy also received abuse or, you know, were getting docs or getting harassed, do you have anything to say about that? Well, have you, you, the question is, have you contacted Jimmy the Junkie direct? I'm in the process of research. So, maybe. Jimmy the Junkie. I have no idea who Jimmy the Junkie is, I'll be honest. Um, because I haven't looked into it. As I said, I am researching this story. But at look, the moment, look. I've spoken to one person, and I want to know if you have anything to say to him. Look, I, I, this is what I want to say. I want to apologize to all the people who were blamed for this attack wrongfully, uh, including all the Muslims who were blamed by people. Uh, like these uh, pro-Israeli lobbyists blaming Hamas. Hamas had nothing to do with it. Uh, Islamic people had nothing to do with it. Uh, I, I want to apologize to all of them because there's many more of them than there is one Ben uh, Cohen. But I also want to apologize to Ben. And I want to say to Ben, uh, I was one of the first to actually point out that this is unconfirmed information. So don't shoot down the messenger. Appreciate the fact that I did warn people and say this is unconfirmed. You can't insinuate or can't pretend that I pulled Ben Cohen's name out of like a rabbit out of a hat and said, "Guys, look, this guy's a terrorist." It's not true. Just simply not okay. true. You, can you agree that all the all the uh, uh, commentary that I made was in the context of unconfirmed? I haven't read all your commentary yet. There's probably some, but uh, I'll take a look. And if there's any questions, I can send it back to you. If that's okay. All right. So tell me uh, honestly. Uh, all jokes aside, what's the angle you're going to take? What's the angle on this story? I am just looking. As I said, I am just interested in knowing who said it first and how it became so popular. So if you if you know who said it first, please let me know. Uh, should, I don't know. Look, I don't know who said it first. It could have been many people. It could have been even uh, who? Who said it first? Guys, let me let, let me ask my followers. Do you want me to ask my followers who said it first? Sure, I'll go for it, mate. I'm going to ask my followers. Guys, uh, the, I've got the ABC on the line here. Tell me who... Said it first. The ABC want to know. The interrogation is on. I've I've found yeah. another account that said it before you. It's I found some Syrian girl is with yeah. us and she's found somebody. Yeah, th I there's an account. I think it's to blame Channel Seven. I mean, they're the ones that ran the story. In any case, uh, they were not the first one to say it. Like, I'm not saying Channel Seven does not have a blame for this, um, or that they are not responsible in some way um for this but i think it's, it's like absolving responsibility for channel seven at this point Look, we, i've been inundated with uh, with supporters uh, claiming that uh, they're taking responsibility for taking it first so there's now thousands of people saying it was me um it's very it's very hard to um very hard to say okay but cha look channel seven all roads lead to channel seven people are saying the only place they saw it was on channel seven if look, is Channel Seven going to say that they got it from me or Syrian girl? Is that what they're going to say? I don't know. You're going to have to ask them. Well, um, okay. Anyways, look, because we're live and in the middle of a broadcast, uh, I appreciate your time. But is there any other questions I can assist you with? No, that's all. Um, look, if uh, thank you for your time. Um, if you have any more info that you want to send me, um, yeah, feel free to email me or. You can find me on Twitter or however you want to reach me. And All right. What, what, what's your Twitter account? I'll, t I'll tell everyone to go and subscribe. Uh, that's okay. Uh, with respect. Well, how, how am I going to reach you if, you, if you're not, if you're not going to tell me where you are on Twitter? All right. Well, my Twitter is, look, if you look up Kevin, you and ABC, you'll see me. Uh, let's just leave it at that. 
All right, Kevin Newen, ABC. Give it a like and a subscribe. Follow Kevin Newen on ABC. And we'll look forward to you coming up with your story. Uh, okay. the, the Guardian's hot on the tail as well. That's why we were late tonight with the broadcast. They're already uh, in the middle of doing a hit piece. So it'll be interesting to see what you guys come up with. Right, but you know what the real story is? That the Bollard guy, Bollard man, who Channel 7 said was Russian, now the Daily Telegraph is saying he's Ukrainian, but other sources are saying he was French. So there's another lead for you. <laughs> Good luck with it. Do you know who he is? No, nah, no idea. No idea. But I think Bollard man's a hero and he needs to be commended and... Uh, uh, we should uh, buy that man a beer. So well done to Bollard, man, who uh, rushed at the attacker. Yeah, well, yeah. All best thoughts to him. All right. And, and by, by the way, last question. Can you please investigate the excess deaths in Australia? Uh, sure. People want to email me about that? Go for it. Yeah. Well, you, you agree that there are excess deaths from the vax? No, I don't see a any scientific basis of that that stands up to empirical but hang on shouldn't shouldn't you have your seventh booster by now you're only on four hmm? you should be on your seventh one yeah, maybe who knows all yeah. right thanks mate all the best bye-bye there you go ladies and gentlemen what do you think of the abc journalist attempt to try and pull the rabbit out of a hat uh that was quite hilarious Siren girl um couldn't keep a straight face watching your reaction what do you reckon? <laughs> but you gotta hey, rope me into the story now now he's going to look up who Syrian girl is. I, I know. That, that's how we do business in Australia. The journalists ring us. We put them on the spot live. They can't get out of it. Now it's not a question of who said or I said what he said. Everyone saw that play out. Quite hilarious. But I will say this uh, very clearly. There was already like that name circulating. I didn't I didn't mention the name. But I did say like, you know, the guy kind of... I've, I've heard reports that the guy was like some kind of israeli look-alike or he looks israeli because i saw these reports claiming that um it was benjamin cohen so it was way before you said it and i've actually posted some of the twitter accounts uh that said it so it and you know it, it did they had you know they backed up the claim i heard like from sources that it was him i don't think that channel seven read your tweet or mine i and they never even they and they didn't say that right he asked channel seven and they didn't say that they read it from anyway. They said it was human error. I think that some of these sources on the ground, maybe they, they put his a face through an AI uh, image um, like app and it came up as possibly this, this as guy. Matching, as matching his face. Yeah. yeah and, and they went they ran with the story. And look, that's look, why look, it was you have to admit, you have to admit, he did look really similar to the bloke, didn't he? And that's what that's what sparked the speculation. When it comes back to the New South Wales Police, why did they delay releasing this information for so long, allowing the community to speculate? And of course, people are going to be upset. I mean, uh, Arnold, you're you're an international lawyer, you're a political commentator. You're seeing this saga unfold in Australia. Uh, don't you think if there's a terrorist attack like that, shouldn't firstly be named a terrorist attack? Secondly, the police should name the attacker, so everyone knows what the story is, the narrative. It's only natural that the public is going to look for answers, true? Sure, of course. But at the same time, you know, everybody says that the investigation is ongoing. So it can only be unconfirmed as, you know, being the light motive word here, unconfirmed. So a lot of speculation, a lot of people having uh, initial uh, opinions on what uh, might have happened, who might have been behind it, what might have been its motivation. You have to be extremely careful. Uh, but, you know, I don't understand the uh, journalist uh, 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 obsession with trying to find out who said it first. It's, it sounds like so banal. And, well, I'll yeah. tell you something. There's more, Six people died in the here. Media. There's more mm. interest from the media into who said it first than there is into the actual attacker. And this is exactly. the thing. I don't want to say, you know who I'm talking about. There's one type of people in the community that whatever the situation is, they will always play the victim and they always find a way to play the victim, even though they're not the victims. Is that true here? You know, it's, I will, sorry, I just want to add to that. It's so very true, but I just want to add to that. Like that very, that very group of people, like we're talking about Avi Yemeni and Drew Pavlou, they were, uh, there was like, it was going viral. Their claims that it was an Islamist were going viral uh, on Twitter you know your tweet got like maybe a hundred maximum retweets their tweets got five thousand retweets and that was the narrative that was set and they never apologized for for making those claims um so 
as you said, you know, what about what about the community as a whole that was tarnished? Their reputation was tarnished. They, they never get they're not they're not going to get an investigation by the ABC News. There's not going to be a hit piece by the ABC News. And you know, it's, it's not our fault that Channel Seven is incompetent. But that's the like, and and they're trying to blame you. I mean, the only time I even wrote Benjamin Cohen was because I was quoting Channel Seven News. They finally that was the first name they came up with. I went and I, and I wrote, oh, Channel 7 News confirms it. And, and that's it. Like now they're, now they're looking for someone to blame. It's called, almost like a witch hunt. But well, I'm, I'm ABC sure is not the only was... agency who's hot on the, on the tracks of this story. Sky News has already done a hit piece. Uh, we can bring that to can you right now. More about we'll that. get back to Syria. Absolutely. And, back to that, that crazy and this story is, in Australia. Uh, just shows Karen how an anti Semitic uh, conspiracy Why theory calling a uh, can get hold. Why isn't this yeah. guy a uh, and there are a couple of large social media accounts. Well, there you go. That's uh, oh, you missed one, you missed it. one story uh, which is uh, making headlines Sky News. Uh, no, Can you tell us more about we'll get back to Syria Absolutely. and, back to that, that and this is in Australia. Uh, uh, just shows Karen how an anti-Semitic uh, conspiracy theory uh, can get hold. Yeah. Uh, and there are a couple of large social media accounts is that why uh, with the names of Syrian girl and Russian, Russian Cossack, uh, rather infamous in, in, in their attitudes. And it was picked up, as you say, by mainstream media, Channel 7. And uh, the name that was given falsely um, it was entirely fake news uh, to the perpetrator was benjamin cohen hang on how can a name be given falsely if it was very clear uh, by me that it was unconfirmed again for these these uh, halfwits who don't understand the meaning of unconfirmed unconfirmed means uh, not true not confirmed not accurate uh, awaiting com um, confirmation i mean arnold it's good that we've got you as an international lawyer here today uh, if I'm giving a report that's unconfirmed, it's unconfirmed, right? Yeah, to the extent you stress that it isn't confirmed, you know, you uh, have taken the prophylactics. It's a, it's a journal, journalism 101. And but, you know, it's it's open to verification. And like, you know, like I said, I, I, I fail to understand the obsession about trying to find out who said what about some alleged, the, the alleged identity of, uh, of the perpetrator. Uh, it's it's you know because if by that tune then if you know as you rightly mentioned earlier uh a lot of people have been rushing in blaming uh muslim terrorists you know in 99 percent of those cases it's it's often uh, islam who gets a bad rap when by definition if somebody understands remotely anything about islam uh killing uh people is not an islamic principle so even that is completely flawed ab initio well, like and I said right just, away, what kind of Islamic terrorist wears footy shorts and a kangaroo's jersey? Uh, Siringa, what's your take? Well, I just wanted to quickly mention that I never said the name Benjamin Cohen until after Channel 7 said it. And now he's like blaming my social media account for Channel 7 saying it when they said it first. And I could actually sue David Adler for defamation in this, in this case. I also now have a case for defamation against uh, Sky News for making the claim that I said Benjamin uh, Cohen to Channel 7 when it was Channel 7 that told Benjamin Cohen to me. Anyway, sorry, just saying. Oh, fair enough. I mean, look, it's everyone's prerogative and everyone's right uh, to investigate whatever they like, right? It's free speech. You can say whatever you like. You can say, I think it was this, I well, the one confirmed this. That's what people did. People were looking for answers. And it's just unfortunate that this poor kid, Benjamin Cohen, the, who was named, uh, unconfirmed, uh, he just looks like the guy, the perpetrator. He looks like him, doesn't he? Look at the photos. We'll bring him up on screen in a second here. But the uh, perpetrator is un just unfortunate for him. It's not his fault. And uh, the people uh, in the social media community, 50,000 posts, what are they going to do? Go and sue every single person. F from the point of view of uh, suing people, uh, Arnold, as a uh, esteemed uh, legal professional, if you put unconfirmed in there, they c then it's not purported as fact, right? Yeah, unconfirmed means unconfirmed. It means, as you said it, you know, Oxford. You know, I'll, we'll point out to the uh, definition in the Oxford uh, Dictionary. That's what it is. End of story. So, 
to the extent you might have omitted to use that qualifier, then yeah, we might have a problem. But to the extent the unconfirmed uh, uh, epithet was uh, was uh, tagged to you know the uh, the uh, uh, speculation, early speculation, uh, it's uh, it's perfectly uh, covered as far as I'm concerned. Look at look at this clown from uh, from X tuning in. Z, he says, I hope they sue you hard. Well, what are you going to sue me for? Uh, Arnold, you're a lawyer. Again, what are they going to sue me for? That I said it's unconfirmed. Actually, I pointed out that it's unconfirmed. I, I was the first source that actually said, hold your horses, guys. This is unconfirmed. Is ABC News admits and confirms that it was already going rampant. It was already being retweeted. It was going thousands and thousands of uh, retweets. By the end of the evening, 50,000 retweets. And Channel 7 ran the story itself. Right? Who was the one of the only ones who said, no, wait a second. It's unconfirmed. Who? The Aussie Cossack. So what can they sue me for? Arnold, what do you reckon? Well, again, I mean, I stand by what I just said. It's just, it's a, it's a storm in a teacup. Uh, again, we don't seem to really talk about the victims here. And that's really what concerns me. Well, I mean, it, it's like this whole story. It, it, there's a new bunch of, there's a new set of victims. It's a very professional campaign, well backed by the media, well backed by the powerful, influential uh, lobby groups, which they do control. And they've inserted themselves as the victims here. And rather than have the country and the <laughs> social media focus and the media focus on the real victims. By the way, one of the victims was a Muslim. He was killed and, and he was stabbed. No one's saying anything about that. A Muslim was killed. All these people that are blaming Muslims, they should be apologizing. They should be getting sued. And they should be the ones copying defamation. For blaming Hamas or blaming Islamic terrorism. Look, it literally had nothing to do with Muslims, and a Muslim was killed. I'm not a Muslim, but I'm uh, jumping in the ring to defend uh, the Muslim community because I think it's disgusting the way they're being treated, and it's disgusting how the media is not calling this out. And it's disgusting how the police commissioner, Karen Webb, can't call a spade a spade and can't call this a terror attack. But what more do you need to prove a terror attack? But it's the same thing. Remember the Christchurch shooting, and that's why they call it a shooting. They don't call it a terror attack because the bloke who was doing the shooting, uh, Brenton Tarrant, uh, uh, he, he was a Nazi and he was trained in Ukraine. He wasn't a Muslim. So they, therefore, he's not a terrorist. And that is the uh, double standards of the West. And look, if I was a Muslim, I would be sick and tired and fed up with this. Syrian girl. I mean, you, you must be sick of this, right? Just unmute yourself, please. Unmute yourself, Syrian girl, please. So, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, well, well it's, from the very beginning, the usual suspects were just trying to use these, like, uh, these tragedies that are happening in Australia to push their own agenda. And you had Avi Yemeni, you had Drew Pavlou, and you had uh, Visigard, another Twitter account. Uh, and uh, that, that journalist, whose name I forget that you mentioned, Tommy Robinson, all jumping on the bandwagon saying, ah, you see... This is be and and you know even I think even people from the community they were saying that uh, this is because of Palestinian demonstrators. So suddenly the whole thing that was happening, the tragedy in Australia, so somehow was related to the Middle East. You know, suddenly it was uh, Drew Pavlou, I believe, said it was ISIS. So uh, it is quite frustrating. And at the time, I saw like reports about this Benjamin Cohen fellow, and I was like, you know what? If it's got to, to do with the Middle East then it looks, it looks like, he actually looks like the opposite. He actually looks like, you know, uh, s s the other side, not the Palestinian side, but the Israeli side. So it just goes to show you how these events are kind of hijacked to push a political agenda. And, and frankly, it is disgusting because while we may ironically have, uh, well, in my case, I, I may have ironically pointed out you know how ridiculous they're being by making these statements they are going viral they they actually uh cause the most amount of damage and i do feel sorry for benjamin cohen because at the end of the day this is all kind of like social media banter that uh some you know accounts said that you actually pointed out was unconfirmed but they were the ones that said they put it on the front page of every newspaper of the newspapers uh the of australia which most people listen to and that that is what's going to be uh, the lawsuit's going to go to them. And they can try to point the finger to other people, but really they're the ones responsible. Well, it's, it's a massive cluster 
F. It's a it's the biggest stuff up from Channel Seven. Monumental stuff up, isn't it? It's monumental. Uh, they they're trying to and look. They they they're, they're going to uh, close ranks and support each other. You can see the Guardian. Uh, that's why tonight's broadcast was late because the Guardian was calling me. That's why I decided to enter the ABC's phone call in the air. I'm not going to um, waste your time. And it turned out quite hilarious. But all of them are now going to do a coordinated attack. I guarantee you. Prediction in the next 24 hours. They're going to try and lay the blame. There's going to be more blame laid against Aussie Kozak and Syrian girl than there is against Joel, uh, what's his name, the, the, the actual terrorist. Blame me and I'm coming for you for defamation because I never mentioned Benjamin Cohen until after Charles Seven mentioned him. So anyone out there listening in the mainstream media, come for me and I'll, I'll, I'll come for you for defamation. Well, so it was after this Channel 7 report. No idea how to hide from him. As for the attacker, 40-year-old Benjamin Cohen, he is known to police. Uh, he his, his motives are not yet known. He was working on his own. Uh, terrorism has been ruled out. For the attacker, 40-year-old Benjamin Cohen, for the attack. There you go, 40-year-old Benjamin Cohen. Uh, and that is the damning uh, Channel 7 footage which has sparked all of this. Uh, but, of course, that, fo that footage... Uh, was in the morning and before that Syrian girl, there was also Channel 7 posts uh, all over the place on Sunrise and you're saying that you got the information from them. I woke up in the morning and I saw Ch Channel 7 saying that finally the perpetrator has been named and they said the poor boy's name. And I unfortunately, I was like, aha, all you people saying it was a Muslim, turns out it wasn't the Palestinian side. It was, you know, it, it was a... Um, uh, Benjamin Cohen, and if if that's that is not my responsibility. In fact, it wasn't a Muslim guy, but it wasn't Benjamin Cohen either. It's you know what? Thousands of people in Australia read Channel Seven had the exact same reaction. There you go. Uh, people are saying again. We'll give them their say. You guys posted before that. As I didn't post it before. Actually, I didn't. I didn't even post it about it, Benjamin Cohen at all until after they posted it. So. Well, I, I can say I posted before that because I said this is unconfirmed. I pointed it out. Yeah, you were trying look, to tell... Look, as long as the media is truthful, I'm not uh, at all opposed to them having a go at me here and saying, Ozzy Kozak on his Twitter uh, posted it. Hundreds of thousands of people saw it, but I said unconfirmed. So well, what, what can I say? Uh, no further questions, Your Honor. I rest my case. What, what else do they want from me? I've said it's unconfirmed. The unconfirmed means it's not true. It's not factual, right? So if anything, uh, the those people who uh, felt offended by this post should say thank you. Ozzy Kozak actually pointed out that this is unconfirmed rather than join the rest of the uh, speculation that was saying that this is factual. Uh, but again, but again. It doesn't matter. They're coming for, you know, you at least for sure. If it, it maybe not, Adam Sadler already came for me on the Insight program. Not inside, sorry, on Sky News. So there, Look, it doesn't matter. The truth doesn't matter to these people. This is about a group of people that have been insulted, and now they're going to come for. Here blood. we go. Let, let's well, do this. Like people, people on X Cal site sixteen. She's, she's mouthing off. She's saying, "Well, go ahead. Tell us what you don't like. Tell us what you disagree with. Tell us where is the deceitfulness. Please let me know. I'm not. A, I'm not at all uh, avoiding this question at all. Uh, please let me know. And I, I'll tell you what. By the way. If they try and sue me or if they try and sue you, you know what's going to happen. We're going to have uh, thousands and thousands of our supporters rally behind us. And it would be funny. if <laughs> It's like, remember when Friendly Geordies got sued by, um, who was it, Barilaro, the New South Wales uh, Deputy Premier. He raised a million dollars. He raised a million dollars for his defense, which he didn't need. It was over the top. But that's what's going to happen here. You try and sue me for saying the word unconfirmed. What, you think you're untouchable? They, but that's the thing, Searingal. They think they're untouchable. They think they, they run you. this town. They run this country. And they want to be the victims. And they want to put themselves They put themselves higher than the real victims. The Muslim security guard who was killed, right? Let's talk about him. If you like, uh, that is where, um, uh, that is where yeah. the attention of the media should be. Well, you know, it's it's ironic that Avi Yemeni posted about him and called him a hero after he accused him of being responsible for the attack. So um, I just wanted to say that... Uh, Faraz Tahir, 30 years old, was working his first shift at the shopping center when he was fatally stabbed. He's from Pakistan. Uh, and Ahmadiyya, Muslim Community Australia member, uh, said that uh, Tahir did not have family in Australia and uh, he's on his own and he's being killed. There you go. What? 
No one knows about that. You know why? Because no one cares about that from the mainstream media. All they can talk about is, oh, you, oh Ben Cohen, oh, look what you said about us. And so, you got people that have been killed, stabbed. The poor kid has no one in Australia. I don't even know who's going to bury him. What kind of a funeral is he going to have? I'm sure the Muslim community is going to come together to look after the family. Or the, There's no family. He's on his own. That's the story that they should be talking about. Where's the sympathy for this 30-year-old guy, uh, Faraz Tahir? Where's the sympathy for the for the mother uh, of the baby? Why isn't the media talking about that? That's where uh, the uh, terrible because attack... someone was offended, uh, Kozak. Someone was offended, and that's the most important thing. And, you know, and who offended him? Channel 7 News. I mean, if they're going to come, f- uh, they can't, they literally can't sue me for defamation. I, I think, I think, that this, that said it first. I think that this right here is the story of the day. Channel 7 using Aussie Kozak as a source. Now, if they're willing to admit that, right, if they're willing to admit that, that uh, the mainstream media now gets its information from the independent uh, journalist, well, that's an admission that the Channel 7 uh, mob has to make. If that's going to be their defense, they might say that. If Ben Cohen takes them to court and says, all right, I'm going to sue Channel 7, and they and the Channel 7 says, we got it from Kozak, no, that's uh, that's something... Uh, they're going to have to make that very uncomfortable admission. <clears throat> anyway, we have Arnold here. We haven't really uh, brought him in. Arnold, sorry. sorry. This, is a, cra- this is like a developing drama. story. No, we- this, is, this is a developing story, and... Um, <laughs> We're, we're very pleased that you're witnessing us. Arnold, we're, we're, you're in Moscow right now, are you? Yes. Lovely, lovely. How, how's, uh, how's the situation in Moscow at the moment? Well, uh, we're still uh, trying to heal from uh, the attacks on uh, March 22nd. As you might have heard, uh, it was about three or four days ago, we uh, had a major announcement from the uh, Russian Investigative Committee bearing on the uh, financier behind the attacks and we do know now although we do not know the particulars of it that the uh, oil and gas company in ukraine i.e burisma was involved so for those who might not know about burisma burisma is mostly associated with uh, hunter biden for the uh, then vice president son uh, got to be invited to sit on the board of that company back in 2014 despite uh, lacking any kind of experience in uh, oil and gas industry. But this is actually kind of a red herring uh, because the most important uh, things that's not being mentioned, uh, at least by and large, uh, is that invited on that board was a man by the name of Kofor Black. And Kofor Black used to be the uh, head of counterterrorism for the CIA back during the war on terror. And uh, he somehow uh, popped up as, uh, you know, uh, out of retirement to sit on that board. And he was also a member of the board of a bank called the Baltic Bank in uh, Latvia, which happened to be doing business with Burisma in terms of financial flow. So there's still a lot of uh, details that remains to be uh, unraveled, uncovered. But uh, if uh, the name Burisma is uh, explicitly mentioned in the uh, initial conclusion of the uh, Russian investigative committee, then basically uh, this goes all the way up to uh, the uh, uh, presidential family in the U.S. Uh, And Russia is going to be going after every single person who was remotely involved in uh, financing those acts. Uh, So this is is something that uh, needs to be really kind of you know, uh, kept an eye on. I have a book that just came out, uh, which somehow discusses and explains and exposes the uh, scheme of external management that the U.S. put in place in the wake of the Maidan. So for more details on this uh, all external management scheme, uh, I would refer, you know, our listeners to my book, Foreign Entanglements. Let our listeners know where they can find your book, uh, Arnold. Well, they can purchase it on uh, Amazon and uh, Barnes and Noble. They'll find it there. Barnes it's and Noble, at, uh, Amazon search. What's the title of the book? Foreign Entanglements. Foreign Entanglements by Arnold Debele, yeah. author and uh, international lawyer and political commentator. Arnold, pleasure to have you join us today on the Aussie Cossack Show. I apologize that our situation in Australia is so topsy turvy. It's upside down. There's so many things happening. You got uh, external wars, internal wars, terrorist attacks, media attacks, 
ABC journalists interrupting our conversation today. But you saw it all play out live, uncensored. And um, pleasure to speak with you. And I'm sure we'll speak in the future. Keep an eye on the situation in uh, the Middle East, in Iraq, uh, where you were Saddam Hussein's lawyer at one stage. Uh, what can I say? A pleasure to have you uh, on the show. And um, we'll uh, look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you very much, Kozak. Keep up the good work. Good on you. There you go. An esteemed guest uh, all the way from Moscow. Uh, I mean, could you imagine? This guy was Saddam Hussein's lawyer. Uh, imagine being Saddam Hussein's lawyer. And you know, some people say Saddam Hussein uh, was the good guy. Uh, he was the bad guy. Look, I think he wasn't that bad. Honestly, look at Iraq under Saddam. Look at Iraq now. Look, the US came in. They executed him. They hung him. Uh, terrible, terrible thing to do to somebody. Uh, did he deserve it? Uh, the West says yes. Saddam Hussein supporters say no. If you ask the Iraqi people now, they'll probably tell you that uh, they were much better off under Saddam Hussein. Just like uh, the Libyan people will tell you that the Libyan population was much better off under Gaddafi. And who appointed the United States as the world's policeman? That they can just march into any country around the world, whether it be Libya, Syria, Iraq, Vietnam, Korea. They do it everywhere and they try and import their democracy. Well, guess what? Some people, some countries don't want American-style democracy. They don't want McDonald's. They don't want aircraft carriers. They don't want B-52 bombers. They don't want napalm. They just want to live their own way with their own values and their own style of government. Some countries are actually proud of their leaders. For example, Russia. Russians love their leader. 87.3% at the election Vladimir Putin got. And all the West can say is there was no democracy. That is Russian democracy. Russian democracy is when the majority say, we want to have this leader again, the same guy we've had for the last 20 years, because Russia is strong and powerful under him. And that is something that the United States and the Western governments don't understand. And just to take Australia, for example, we've got prime ministers here every four years. And what do they do? They spend their time uh, manipulating the general public to try and get voted in again. Well, if you've got a leader who's in there and he's there for good, doesn't have to worry about elections, he can get back to running the country and focus on making the country strong and not worrying about uh, pandering to preference deals and pandering to uh, corporate sponsors who are going to fund election campaigns like we have in Australia. And that's where the uh, corruption comes from in this country. Albanese, what did he get? 34% in the election. How is that a majority leader? Uh, all countries should stay in their own jurisdiction, says Sarah. Uh, exactly right. And uh, the jurisdiction of the Soviet Union is the jurisdiction of the Soviet Union. And no one ever agreed or allowed NATO to set up bases on the borders. So uh, as you can see, there are many people uh, wide awake around the world, including uh, uh, Arnold, our esteemed guest tonight. As Vladimir points out, he's a very smart man. Uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, share this Sunday evening with you. More people in the comment section are saying Gaddafi was a great man. I think he was a good man. He was a good guy. He did a, he did good for his people. He was probably bad for the Americans. And by the way, the Americans at one stage funded him and armed him. And that's the lesson for Zelensky, that his time is coming up, that he's next. And he is just going to be the next uh, victim in the American uh, system. When they appoint their puppets, they fund them, they arm them, they get them to fight, and then they chew them up and spit them out. Uh, Syrian girl, uh, what is your take uh, in a closing statement to all of the uh, haters and people online and unmute because we want to hear your uh, final closing statement to all those people, those commentators who are uh, mouthing off tonight on Twitter? Well, you know, these people are the ones responsible. Channel 7 said his name. I woke up in the morning. I saw Channel 7 saying it. I repeated it just like maybe thousands upon thousands of other Australians that woke up that day that first heard the name of the supposed perpetrator and they they, they relied on the mainstream media and that was my mistake. Um, so like the, you can't really sue me for defamation, but I can sue you for defamation. And I just might sue the inside program for naming me as being responsible for Channel 7 screwing it up. And I bet you anything Channel 7 sources was uh, someone like was on the scene or something like that that was generating these AI uh, pictures of, of individuals 
and uh, trying to find the, they were just really thirsty for information. And unless Channel 7 like, blames you, then you're definitely not responsible. You said it was unconfirmed and you were quoting other people. I made the mistake of quoting Channel 7 and that was my crime, ladies and gentlemen. And they're going to make up this whole scenario about it. The only thing is I saw his name being circulated. I didn't mention it, but I did say that, oh, maybe it wasn't a Muslim. You know, maybe it was a different type of person. You know, maybe it was, if you're saying it's a Palestinian, actually, maybe it's an Israeli. So I made these tongue-in-cheek sort of comments because of that information that was circulating, but I never named a single person. And it's exactly as you said, like, uh, they're going to jump on this because uh, these people are the darlings of the state, unfortunately. And we are uh, not really, we're like, under. we're secondhand human, like, not secondhand, we're uh, subhumans, essentially, uh, in comparison to this particular um, organization. Well, that's your closing statements here and go. There is um, uh, one last opportunity for anyone to have their say. And uh, we can see plenty of people are next. Look how many thousands are watching at the moment. It's massive. Make sure you uh, uh, share this uh, broadcast. And remember, guys, Sunday nights at 5 o'clock. Question, who reported him first? Who reported Ben Cohen first? That's what the ABC rang about. That's what they're asking. That's what everybody's asking. Uh, but Simo said, I should have given Channel 7. We did give Channel 7. It was a quite, a quite a hilarious interview. I wonder what the ABC journalists are gonna are gonna say when they realise that that interview was on the air live. But I uh, crossed my T's and dotted my eyes. I did say yeah, you're okay if we record this, and I did tell him that he's live on a broadcast. I don't think he believed me, did he, Siri girl? I think that he was too in his own mind frame that he didn't even hear you. Um, and I think he was just on a mission that was dictated to him from above. Like, get this guy. He, he, he said it was an unconfirmed report. You're going to have to paint a picture. Blame him. Channel 7 is innocent. It's, you know, and, and that was what he was, he was going for that. I, I don't think he understood anything that was happening around him, to be perfectly frank. Is it quite, basically an NPC, you know, a non-playable character? What do, you, what do you think of this comment, uh, Siren Girl? You just didn't check, got obsessed about anti-Israel and thought it was Islamophobia and used it to support the narrative you wanted. What's your response to that? Uh, they were the first people that were jumping on the bandwagon and getting thousands and thousands of views, which we can show, were the people that were saying it was an Islamic uh, guy without any evidence. But not only that, they started to mention the Palestinian Palestinian demonstrations in the same breath as that. So that it's just, you know, anything goes in order to push for an Israeli agenda. And it is not our fault that the this Benjamin Cohen guy was named not only in the social media, but uh, in the mainstream media. And we just happened to mention that, oh, you know what? It turns out he wasn't an Islamist. Turns out it wasn't a Palestinian. Turns out something very different. And we're getting the blame for that. Blame yourself. Like, why is Channel... I, obviously, there was some kind of intel or something that confused people into believing it was him. I don't believe that. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. But I really don't think that Channel 7 was diligently watching your Twitter account to hear you say it was unconfirmed. It's just so funny. The notion of it is just so funny. I'm kind of, I'm both laughing and crying at the same time. It's inappropriate to laugh. It's a tragedy and they're making us laugh. Like that's the worst thing of all. Now we're all going to hell because they made us laugh while this is happening. Well, Siren Girl, I mean, uh, people are saying some people, and these are mostly uh, pro-Israeli lobbyists, are saying that there should be a defamation against Channel 7. Uh, but they're also saying, uh, like, like people in the comment section are saying, he was known to police, Channel 7 said sue them. Uh, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty big call. But <laughs> when my conversation was around Channel 7, it was in the morning. And I, before Channel 7, said unconfirmed. Channel 7 didn't even say unconfirmed. So, guys, if you want to have a defamation lawsuit, bring it on. Let's do it. Uh, and you know what? We have so many supporters. Syrian Girl, Ozzy Kozak. Watch this. I'm just going to ask our people watching now, if we have to fight and defend ourselves against an uh, Israeli lobby-funded defamation lawsuit against us, would you crowdfund us? I'm not asking you to crowdfund us. I'm just saying, would you? Uh, a pledge. Just write in the comment section, yes. No, rather than defend, yes. Would, would you crowdfund me suing them for defamation? Because that's what's about to happen. 
Like, okay, just, I don't want anyone to crowdfund I'll anyone. We're not, we're not, we're not having Yemeni that. here, but we just want to ask our people, would you support that venture? Let's have a look. Look at the comments coming in. Look at them comments flying in there. Everyone's saying, yes, yes. Look, this guy's already offering 100 bucks. My goodness. We haven't even started. People are already throwing money at us. Look at this. Bang, bang, bang. Look at this. It's going off. It's going off. All right, look at this. Look at this. Everyone's saying they'll fund it. So you guys, <laughs> look at our great supporters. Look at this. Look at the support flooding in. Right. We sue Sky News. Uh, sue Sky News. Well, it's interesting because um, I didn't. I didn't say anything. You said it was on look, look at this. Look at them all. They all want to fund the legal fees. So anyone who wants to have a go, that's not even. Uh, look at the comments are just flooding in. Look at this. Look at this. David Adler wants to have a go. We've got a war chest. This is a war chest demonstrating a war chest. Okay. Uh, no, if you want to have a go, look at that. This blog just chips in $200. Mishka Jakapu says he'll give $200. So you want to fight? We'll fight. But again, no, we're not no. asking you to donate. We're not doing the RVM any routine here. I'm just demonstrating the support that's out there because people see what happened here. People see clearly. And if you want to go and check, go to Aussie Kozak on X uh, on Twitter and you will see. The keywords unconfirmed, uh, Syrian girl. You're just a, a a lovely girl who was misguided by Channel Seven and other mainstream media. I, I apologize. I I made the mistake of trusting the mainstream media, and that was a fatal fatal error. I do acknowledge that, and I apologize to Benjamin for trusting Channel Seven. Okay, Stephen wants to give one thousand dollars already. <laughs> so we've already raised like thousands of dollars. We haven't even started the legal process. If we want to. Um, uh, we've got inmates. We've got inmates who would even share their buy up with us. Have a look at that. Australia loves the Aussie Cossack. Um, you know, actually, I've been in a defamation uh, proceedings three times and I've got a 100% track record. And each one of them ended in mediation in my favor. So I've got a good track record. I've got an excellent legal team, uh, some of the best in town. Uh, what can I say? If they want to have a go, they can have a go. Channel 7 uses the algorithm to write breaking news. So they probably did it on autopilot. You know um, what? It gives the word NPC a brand new meaning. Like these non-playable characters. They're basically just automatons. There was one time where Sky News, um, it wasn't just Sky, it wasn't Sky News Australia, it was Sky News Britain and the BBC called me a Russian bot, like literally an automaton, a robot. I, they're the automatons. They can't even check and give me a call and know that I'm a human being. Like this is, uh, this is, <laughs> this is hilarious. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, AI is going to take over the mainstream media. I guarantee you, it's all going to be automated. Maybe it already is. It probably already is. A lot of it they write automatically. But uh, I mean, the kind of journalists that they employ in the mainstream media, if they were willing to toe the line on the on the jabs and go along with that narrative, they've lost all credibility anyway. You want to talk about? defamation and being accurate and, and suing people for telling the truth. What about all the journos that were telling us to go and get jabbed? Like this ABC guy who's had four and he's technically, as he's unvaccinated. And we shouldn't talk about that because we're also live broadcasting to YouTube. And it's a bloody disgrace that we have to feel censored that we can't use those words and talk about those words. Philip Alex, who has a very funny question. Uh, if Ozzy Kozak was in Westfields and pushed Joel to the ground, would he be charged with assault? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I reckon they charge me. They charge me and they let the other guy go. <laughs> I reckon for sure, yes. Uh, very funny. Anyway, what a great way to end the week. It's a big week. Um, uh, Syrian girl, you're being followed by many people. They love your work uh, talking about all this in Australia. You've got a lot of support. And we've seen that today uh, on today's live. If people want to have a go, if they want to sue, if they want to go for defamation, uh, you're probably going to end up mm, Syrian girl would make more money, right? from people throwing thousands of dollars into the ring to support her legal fund than you would uh, in other terms. So what my advice is to the people, the, hey, uh, my advice is to the people, and we're not asking for donations here, seriously. We're just demonstrating the capacity. There is capacity. There's a huge support network. There's a big subscriber base. There are thousands of people watching now. Uh, and if you're not already subscribed, go to Syrian Girl on Twitter. She's got like 300 and how many? 68,000? 380,000 subscribers of Syrian Girl just on X. That's the, the kind of numbers we're dealing with here. And what can I say? Uh, if that's what they want. They never said unconfirmed. The Aussie Cossacks said unconfirmed. And that's right. Here we go. Another smart ass in the comment section. But I'm going to let his comments slide. 
Why did you report it if it was still unconfirmed? I pointed out that there was speculation and I said it's unconfirmed. So it could be interpreted that I was actually warning, right? Warning people saying this is unconfirmed information. There you go. Uh, make sure um, make sure you get the right story here, guys. Don't listen to Channel 7. And again, the, the bottom line is, and we'll close with this, that today is not a day about uh, anyone except for the victims, right? And that's what the mainstream media and the people who want the sympathy, they're pulling the rug onto themselves. They're pulling the blanket onto themselves. People have been killed. They're upset it wasn't an Islamist. They are upset, aren't they, Syrian girl? They're upset. When they found out it wasn't an Islamic terrorist, their narrative collapsed. Yes, you, you know, uh, Abi Yemeni went through his Twitter thread and deleted everything that he said. But there was witnesses. Are you sure about that? You're saying I, that Abi Yemeni, when they realized it wasn't an Islamic terrorist, he backtrapped and deleted everything. Yeah, yeah. One of the things he said is, why isn't the terrorist being named? You know, like, and it's kind of hilarious because when it, when he was named by Channel 7, I think he was quite um, shocked at how, how it was being named. But yeah, it's very hard to live in this country. Uh, oh, look, one of the first people that uh, tweeted about this Benjamin Cohen, I, I don't want to name names, but there's there's like a bunch of Twitter accounts that mentioned him, which you probably took that from. I, I took it from the source, the source, Channel 7. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to give you like a list of people that were mentioning him before even you. And yeah, you know, there's six victims here, but for some reason, it's really only one victim. And that guy is the victim of Channel 7. Like, isn't that weird? No one's talking about the other victims. What can I say? And that's uh, one of the tragic uh, circumstances, the way the media has run this. The way the media has run this, unfortunately. But... There were heroes that day. Some say he was a Russian. Some say he was Ukrainian. Some say he was uh, French. Uh, that's another story. Inspector Amy Scott, she gets our uh, applause and credit. And that's who this day should be about. That's who the media should be focusing on. And uh, by all means, uh, Ben Cohen, Sue Channel 7, go for it. I, I, if I was you, I would, honestly. That was an outrageous uh, report that Channel 7 did. If Channel 7 want to say that they used me as a source, well, I said it's unconfirmed reports pointing out that it's not true. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Uh, how far are we going to go down the, the rabbit hole? But if you want to go that way, uh, we're ready. I'm ready. Siren Girl's ready. Our supporters are ready. We've got thousands ready, of you guys I'm ready watching. to call the offensive, guys. I'm going to sue that Sky News for saying I'm infamous. Uh, they say Tommy Robinson's rhetoric was insane. Uh, they say Avi went full apartheid retard. Uh, what can I say? Jay says, Avi was for the people during the COVID lockdowns and now regarding Palestine and Ukraine, he's for somebody else. What can I say? I'm not into uh, bagging Avi Emini. He does great work and we've collaborated before in the past. I know uh, he's not popular now with uh, uh, many people because of the Israeli-Palestine situation, but I sort of understand him because that's the kind of flack that I copped as well in the start of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. All of a sudden, all these people turn on you. Right, people that used to be your supporters, and a lot of Avi's supporters have turned on him. He knows that. We all know that. You just go to any social media platform of Avi, look at any of the uh, rhetoric; it's all against him. But what can I say? It's going to be hard for them to get anything out of you when you're in a Russian embassy. Is what I have to say. Oh, well, how are they going to serve the documents? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if the if uh, even the AF Hang on. Even if the AFP can't get me, how is uh, a defamation claim going to get me? How are you going to give me uh, a concerns notice? I can probably give it to my... No, my uh, it's going to be a hit piece. What it's going to be. It's going to be a hit piece um, and every normal person in our lives is going to suffer because the media loves the story to... They wanted... They wanted... You know, these same people wanted to make uh, the uh, Palestinians the devil and... Uh, you know, their own community, the victim. And now that's what they've got. They've got it because Channel 7 named one of their own. The end. Now they're, they're the victim. So you reckon it's a reverse play? Yeah, it's Darvo. Okay, Sarah wants to talk about truth. Everybody must be truthful. Sarah, can you tell me where we were not truthful? Okay, if I say it's an unconfirmed report, this is what I don't get. 
these people wish I didn't say unconfirmed. That then they would have a good opportunity to have a to take a swing, right? But my intuition told me that this is probably not the guy, even though it looks like him. There was lots of speculation. Again, we're repeating ourselves here for the people in the comment section who are a little bit slow to catch on, uh, such as Sarah. Uh, but what can I, I say? I, 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 I'll tell you right at the bat, I made a mistake. I trusted Channel 7. And I never trusted anyone else. So even when it came to your, your tweet, I was like, if this is true, you know, it would explain other things but i never named a name and the only time i named a name and my biggest mistake you're right i did i screwed up i trusted channel seven that let that be a lesson to everybody never ever trust channel seven okay that's that's the lesson here well you know channel seven this is the other big story that uh quietly i'll tell you guys on the air and there's another obviously quite like exclusive if you want to call it that but channel seven said that it was the bollard man was russian bollard man right bollard man was then reported by the daily telegraph as being ukrainian but bollard man himself when he was asked his name is despru he's french right he's french Mon Dieu. he's not even russian for goodness sake tell me this Mon he's not even russian but channel seven said he was russian because the and channel the seven reporter doesn't know the difference between russian and french can you believe that? There you go. Uh, that's his name on screen, Silas Despru. What do you think of that? That's Channel 7's level. So the Russian media then goes and says, fantastic, and everyone says, fantastic, what a great Russian hero. He's a volunteer. He's a, a courageous person who, who fought the attacker off with a bollard on the escalator. Channel 7 have absolutely shown themselves to be hopeless, hopeless, hopeless. They, they started that story as well. That was on the air talking about that this bloke was a Russian guy. And what can you do? It's just so, it's, if you look at it, if you take a step back and you look at this, I'm sorry, but like, it could be a dark comedy. You know, it's just so, it's so ridiculous that <laughs> this is hey, even it, happening. Oh, look, so, Sarah's in the room. Welcome, Sarah. Silas Despo. Sarah, hi. So guys, uh, We'll leave it at that. It's been a great uh, episode. Um, I think there's uh, one more thing we need to show you, and that's this. This is the uh, identifying Benjamin Cohen, Matt Wallace. Here we go. As the terrorist in Sydney shopping center knife attack that left the WD in brutal condition. So this is uh, one of the first posts, I reckon. 5.9 million views this got, and that was 3 a.m. on April the 14th. 5.9 million views. So when they, when they want to talk about who started this or where this news story came from, you can dig around and you'll discover that it was when the Aussie Cossack, when this came across my desk, I'm the one who said it's unconfirmed, pointed that out, reported on it, doing the responsible thing, doing the right thing. Can you take that away from me? Can you dispute that? When this was, the horse had well and truly bolted by then, millions of views. It was reposted uh, or tweeted 50,000 times throughout the evening last night. Uh, there you go. It is um, It is indeed. Guys, it's been a very great episode. I thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, make sure you tune in every Sunday evening because that's the new uh, time, 5 p.m. Sundays. Uh, Syrian girl, uh, thanks for joining us as well. It's good to see you're in a fiery spirit. You're never giving up. You keep fighting. And uh, that's what your enemies and your uh, opponents need to know, that you will not give up, Syrian girl. We can see that from you. Thank you very much. No, I'm here to stay. There's only one way for me to go out. So thanks very much. Got any guys. And make sure, please, uh, like, subscribe, and share this video. Uh, we've kept it under two hours exactly. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, get off Facebook. If you're watching on X, well done. If you're watching on YouTube, that's good. Uh, watching on Rumble, even better. Uh, make sure you look at all our platforms and share in this video. And keep an eye out for the ABC's response. We will be posting that to Aussie Cossack Twitter as well. You saw it play out live. That outrageous interview with the ABC journalist uh, live on the air tonight on the Aussie Cossack show. Have a great evening, Sydney. And by the way, remember, it's not about anyone. It's not about Aussie Cossack. It's not about Syrian girl. It's not about Ben Cohen. It's not about David Urban. It's not about any other imaginary characters or not about Jimmy the Junkie. Today's and yesterday's events are only about 
the victims, their families, and our condolences go to them, the real victims, not the pretend internet victims, the real victims who were killed, who were stabbed, who were uh, who suffered, the mother of that child, uh, horrific, uh, our condolences. And it's Penny Wong who didn't give condolences to, to the Mo Moscow Croker City Hall massacre. And this has now happened in Australia only weeks later. Uh, what does that tell you? That tells you that you should always offer condolences and condemn terrorism wherever it is. As Putin said, terrorism has no nationality and no religion. It needs to be condemned.